We've been looking at some solar battery systems on this channel that are easy, potentially DIY, straightforward, simple, and cost-effective. We've been asking the question, what if you could install a solar battery system in your home with no full solar roof, no huge installation costs, and significantly slash your energy bills whilst doing so? Well, that's kind of the promise of this EcoFlow Stream system. In a previous series of videos, I reported to you about the Stream Ultra with four solar inputs for four panels, and the Stream AC Pro, which is just a battery, but has plug sockets as well. In this video, we're gonna be turning our attention to the big boy, to the Stream Ultra X. So EcoFlow makes bold claims about all of these devices. So stick around, I'm gonna test out whether these really deliver. If you like videos where we test real world solar applications, then you probably wanna to subscribe to the channel. We're gonna try and figure out what works and what doesn't work and what we can recommend and what we can try and steer people away from. So like the video, let's go. Okay, to start off, what is different with the Ultra X? Why is this being touted as the kind of sweet spot of the stream, of the EcoFlow stream range? Well, as you can see this from the size, it's almost double the stream Ultra, okay? This is 3.84 kilowatt hours of battery storage versus 1.92 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So it's double the battery storage capacity. What about the other specifications? Well, broadly, everything else is the same. Has basically the same inverter, the same four solar panel inputs on the back of it. In fact, let's just show you that right now. So here on the back, we effectively have the same as the Stream Ultra on the left-hand side. You've got eight connectors here. That's two per solar panel for you newbies. These are standard MC4 connectors, complete industry standard. Up the top here, this can be connected to the grid. This can be connected to additional battery storage like the AC Pro or another Stream Ultra or another Ultra X. And then these are your standard three pin AC sockets. All of these rubber bungs mean that this is IP65 rated. So yes, you could leave it outside. You probably want a little bit of shelter, but it has water and dust resistance. Now, one of the things that strikes me about this straight away is whilst the inverter is the same, this over here is also part of this aluminium heatsink. okay? So whilst the fins don't stick out as far, this is gonna have some effective cooling. Now, let me show you what that looks like on the Stream Ultra and on the AC Pro with my thermal imaging camera. So these devices are just passively cooled, so they don't have any fans, which makes them quiet and easy to sight in various locations because you don't have to worry about any noise. But as you can see, it gets quite warm. The heat sinks are very warm to touch. Here's my big solar inverter which also gets extremely warm. And as you can see, so the Ultra is clearly doing all of the work. At the moment, I've just got two solar panels connected to it, but the Ultra is the one that is connected to the grid. And the AC Pro is just kind of like the slave. It's almost like the master versus the slave. So that all goes to say that this entire piece round here this is all aluminium and this is all gonna work like a giant heat sink. So we have the same size inverter, but the heat area for heat dissipation is about 1.5 times bigger. We're gonna come back to testing the heat capabilities once I plug some solar panels into it and connect it up and stuff. All of the stream devices carry the same 10 year warranty, 6,000 cycles, all pretty standard. Right, something that you should be aware of. This beastie is 38 kilograms, so whilst it has good carry handles, you need to be physically able to be able to lug this around, and it's probably not gonna be something that you're gonna move. The smaller ones, very nice and manageable and easy to sight anywhere. Are you ready for some testing of this? Before we get into any testing, we're gonna to have to get this device set up. Let me show you how easy that is. So I'm in the EcoFlow app now. I already have a couple of devices, which you can see down the bottom here. So I'm gonna to go to the top right hand corner, press the plus I, add device. Oh, I should probably turn it on. Hold down the power button on the device. You can see the lights are flashing. There you go, it's picked up a Stream Ultra X. So I'm gonna click on that one. Away we go. 
And then I'll press next because it's already got all of my internet details in there. Okay, well, that didn't go to plan, did it? Wi-Fi connection error. And we do have a mesh router in the corner of the garage. So the Wi-Fi signal in here is perfect. Let's retry. We have failed once again. Third time lucky. Well, here I was telling you how easy it is to add an EcoFlow device to the system. And clearly it's having some issues. Let's try that again, shall we, from the start. Press OK. Next, we're getting some different flashing lights now. Aha, now we need to do a firmware update. Okay, now we've given that a couple of minutes to download and install and restart itself and it is updated. So now there's a couple of things that I do. Straight away, I'm gonna click on it in the device. I'm gonna to go to settings and I'm gonna change the device name and I'm gonna delete stream from the beginning. Confirm. Just makes it a bit cleaner and easier to see what's what than putting stream in front of all of my devices. Well, it came with 30% out of the box, which is fine for leaving LFP cells at that sort of state of charge whilst they're being shipped and transported. But let's go charge it up and see what we can manage. It was absolutely chucking it down, but we just had a break. You can see the panels are still soaked, but I've connected four of them up uh, to the uh, EcoFlow Stream Ultra X. At the moment, what is going on here? PV1 400, PV2 400, PV3 54, PV4 5. Okay. I should perhaps check some of those connections. That's not good results. So I'm here messing around, I'm changing cables, I'm alternating panels, I've got four panels plugged in, and then it dawns on me. The Ultra X must have a limitation when it comes to off-grid operation because these devices are designed for grid applications, not off-grid, and so it caps the solar input at 850 watts or thereabouts and distributes it between the inputs. So if I plug this one back in, we'll see what happens about the distribution. There you go, PV1 down at three watts and before it was up at about 400 watts. There we go, it's bumping itself up and then PV4 is dropping down now. Well, there you go. Off-grid operation, the Ultra Series only has 850 watts of solar input. This is a device that should be grid tied. It's 10 to two right now. Let's just leave it to charge up and then we'll get on with some more of the testing. I would like to retract that previous statement and that comment because now all of the MPPTs are tracking around 320 watts at the moment. Uh, the sun is kind of at the wrong angle for the panels, but they're not doing bad. 505 watt panels as a recap if you haven't seen my previous videos. Um, 1.3 kilowatts, so 1,300 watts between the four panels. And so I don't know, was it an issue with a low state of charge that perhaps it won't ramp up the MPPTs? But I mean, it was 30%. Um, or was it just a little glitch, you know, first time turning on and figuring itself out. But we've got a pretty solid 1.3 kilowatts at the moment anyway. Because of the um, settings, I had it set to the charge limit of 80%. And so it clipped some of my solar input and I just realized uh, about 15, 20 minutes ago and upped the charge limit setting up to 90% to get a bit more juice in it. I'd need to connect up the parallel lead and get it in place with the other devices and see how this is gonna then balance the charge between them. This parallel link cable, it has some communication, but it has AC pins. It doesn't have any DC connectors to the next stream device. Well, it's been about two weeks since the last video that I shot and the Stream X has just been working away nicely. I want to share a couple of things that I've noticed. So when I had the Stream Ultra and the AC Pro here and they were parallel linked and they had one AC outlet, 
I noticed that EcoFlow were trying to be smart with the inverter. And if, for example, the house load was trying to draw 500 watts, instead of splitting that equally, 250 watts from each device, it would actually only take 500 watts from one of the devices for five minutes, and then it would switch to the other one. So it would alternate which inverter it was using. And that helps the, uh, the inverters to work in a more efficient range. And um, I thought that that was pretty good. Apparently they, the Stream Series didn't do that at the beginning. So that's come by way of firmware updates that it tries to work as efficiently as it can. I guess EcoFlow are mindful that they've got loads of inverters running and the standby losses and all those kind of things. The Ultra X doesn't have to worry about any of that. If this is enough storage for you, then this is a no brainer compared to the Ultra and the AC Pro. If you do need additional plug sockets, of course, there's two outlets on this one, AC Pro and the Ultra give you four. Of course, uh, this Ultra X has four MPPTs. You may want two Ultra devices. So you've got eight MPPTs for eight solar panels. There's definitely some pros and cons. Of course, this is a big beast um, and probably a bit harder to sight around your home, depending on what your situation is looking like. Thermal. Oh, can't forget that. Thermal management. So what I did as a little test, and for some reason, I think it was user error um, or maybe the camera glitched or something. It hasn't recorded what I tried to capture. Um, basically, I was convinced that this was going to have better thermal management and to the touch that seems true but I wanted to try and verify that with the thermal imaging camera and actually test it. So what I did to do that was I wired up two solar panels to the Ultra, two to the smaller Ultra, two solar panels to the Ultra X. They were both getting the same amount of solar input and so in theory, you would think they should be the same temperature. The Ultra X was consistently five degrees cooler than the Ultra. That was more than I expected, to be honest, um, but I'm no electronic uh, engineer or designer. So I don't know if that's good, bad, whatever, but from what I know of electronics, keeping them cooler is going to be better for longevity anyway. So this one, the heat sink on the back of it, it's still warm to the touch but it's not hot um, and it's been running solar for the last couple of hours and it's a bright sunny day. To the touch actually, it feels like the difference is more than five degrees, but from what I've measured, it seems like it's five degrees. So who is this for? Well, this, as we covered in the previous videos, the EcoFlow Stream Series is for a group of people that want a generally a small amount of solar on the house. They want to do some of it DIY. Of course, all the DC side of plugging the solar panels in and stuff, you can do all of that DIY, no problem. It's the AC connection to your house. That should still be done by a uh, certified electrician. If you want to eke out efficiency and get the most battery storage capacity you can, then the Stream X is a no brainer. How does it then start to compare price-wise to a standalone system? Well, the price at the moment, these are selling for 1500 quid. And what you get for that is basically a two kilowatt solar inverter. Although it will take two kilowatts of solar, but I guess it's a 1.2 kilowatt AC inverter. And you get 3.84 kilowatt hours of storage, all wrapped up in a very neat uh, package, a good app, uh, lots of functionality there, easy to read and get your stats from. I hope this has all been helpful to you, all of my waffling and stuff. I did uh, try to measure using my Shelly uh, energy meter that I've got, the efficiency of the Ultra X compared to the Ultra and AC Pro. Unfortunately, the way that I was logging the information through the Shelly didn't work out. The SunSync solar inverter also does give me some data that I can draw some comparisons of the efficiency from, but I don't have enough confidence in that data to present it to you as hard fact. Over the two weeks that the Ultra X has pretty much just replaced the Ultra and the AC Pro, what I can say is that I feel on my daily usage, 
this appears to be about 10% more efficient than running the two devices next to each other. There's so many variables um, depending on your load. The, efficient, the efficiency of the inverter will increase and decrease depending on how much load or how little load you put on the devices. Most inverters seem to run more efficiently at higher load. And so when it's a lower amount of uh, draw and what's being used through the inverters, then they typically tend to be a little less efficient. So I, I think it's good. Let me know if you think it's good value for money. And I know a lot of you in the comments have bought these and are very happy with these. And um, thank you for a few people who have been giving me some hints and tips as well. I'm definitely not the guru on this. It's been an interesting little experiment to see what is available to people. Yeah, you know, I've got 22 solar panels on the roof and a big, you know, almost nine kilowatt solar inverter. Um, I guess I'm not really the target demographic for these stream units. I can see how effective they would be for the right target market. Anyway, I'm just waffling. Um, I've got to get this video out now because we are moving on to bigger and better things coming to the channel. Much bigger and better things. And there's not just one of those. There are two of these. I guess I should get them out of the crate, start working on that. That's going to be a big video for the channel, that one. Stay tuned.